discuss and you're watching the Mojo Story, our independent digital platform where every day we do a deep dive into the big stories of the day. On the program today, it is the peak of the farmers' protest. Two of the three states from where the bulk of the farmers are protesting are actually Congress-led states. There you can see those images. It's getting to be a little over a month since our farmers have been on the streets. One would think that this is a critical time in India's politics, and it is a particularly critical time for India's opposition. It also happens to be the day when it is the Congress Foundation Day, when there was a big function at the Congress headquarters. But guess who was missing from this function? Well, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi decided to go abroad again. Every time I actually read out those words or say those words out loud, it feels to me like I've done this program and said these words several times before in the last few years. An acute sense of deja vu, yet clearly Rahul Gandhi is neither bothered by the taunts of the BJP or of the criticism of the media and other commentators, nor even by disturbed well-wishers who believe that this is an inflection point for the Congress party. On the program today, we're asking whether India's national opposition is basically on vacation. Ramchandra Guha recently called for the Gandhis to leave the Congress and save the party. It's a sentiment that many people are echoing either publicly or privately. There are others who believe that the media gives the Gandhis too hard a time while letting Modi and the Modi government have a free pass. Where does the truth lie? We've got a very interesting uh, panel on the program and let me introduce all of them one by one. Uh, we have on the program uh, Veer Sangvi, a well-known uh, editor and commentator and columnist and television host. Uh, we're also joined by Tavleen Singh, uh, who I think is perhaps uh, one of the most acerbic uh, and blunt pens uh, in this country. So it's always fun to have her on. Uh, we have Sadanand Dhumi uh, with us, uh, who's a Wall Street Journal uh, columnist, as well as a writer for The Times of India and a regular uh, commentator on a host of shows. Uh, we have uh, Shahid Siddiqui, who is an editor of uh, Nei Dunia, one of our, again, uh, one of our foremost uh, commentators who's also had a stint in politics and therefore can speak from both perches, uh, really. And we have uh, Professor Shruti Kapila, uh, who has been writing on what she's been calling the inhalation of India's opposition uh, and is a professor at Cambridge University. So um, a really uh, sort of heavyweight panel here uh, to talk us through India's vacationing opposition, as I'm choosing to uh, to call it today. And uh, let me go uh, straight, as it were, uh, to Tavleen, if I can start with you. And I start with you, Tavleen, because everybody knows you hate the Gandhis. So that's not really a headline. That's not really a news point, right? Uh, but the news point is that you've actually been quite critical of the Modi government. In your most recent column in the Indian Express, you actually said that this was the first time that Narendra Modi was beginning to look, look weak, that the farm laws agitation was now less about farm laws, but more about a host of other issues. I absolutely agree. And then in the middle of all of this, Rahul Gandhi chooses to go away on what the Congress is calling a brief personal visit. Is this even like newsworthy anymore? Like a part of me just feels like, oh my God, not again. Once again, sorry, Tabi. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't hate the Gandhis at all. I always get charged with having a personal reason for either criticizing Modi or criticizing the Gandhis or whatever. I don't have a personal angst against them. I objected to their policies. And it seems that I was quite right to do so because they've learned no lessons. It's now seven years. We still see no sign of, the, of an attempt to build the party. Do you know Rahul Gandhi could go and leave as much as he wanted to if he could if he'd done something to build up the party that was reduced to such a low point. Now, nothing has been done about that. So all we've got is a little shuffling of darbaris in Delhi, which really is not going to help us. Secondly, I really believe that the reason why Modi has been able to get away with a lot of very bad things this year, very bad things, is because the Congress party has failed in its role as an opposition party, and it must get its act together. When it does, Rahul Gandhi can spend Christmas and New Year where he wants to. But, you know, I mean, it's, he's, he would be more relevant if he'd done something to actually build the party up. Elaborate on your, your point about the shuffling of Darbaris. What do you mean by that? 
you know, you've got the same bunch of people that we've seen for a very long time, and they're basically people without a base. There's not a single person in Rahul and Sonia Gandhi's immediate uh, circle who can bring in one state. I mean, if you think Ashok Gehloth can, well, you know, maybe Ashok Gehloth is the only one, but, you know, I mean, and I don't think he can. But there was a time when the Congress party was powerful because it had powerful chief ministers, because it had Sevadal workers in every village in India. And, you know, they're absent. You, you go into a village, you ask anyone if they're working for the Congress party, and you'd be lucky to find someone. Reed, let me let me ask you to uh, you know add to that. Like I think it's very difficult to actually disagree uh, with with Tavleen. But the point is that there is an alternative narrative, and it's a uh, it's a narrative held and propagated by several liberals uh, who basically argue that that media gives a tougher time to Rahul than it does to Narendra Modi. That the BJP remains obsessed uh, with Rahul Gandhi. That if he isn't worth the fuss, then why even comment on the fact? Uh, that he's gone on these holidays. How do you see uh, the fact that he's chosen to go off at this time? Okay. There are two basic questions, Barkha, which are not necessarily the same. The first is that Rahul Gandhi has gone off apparently on holiday, which is supposed to be very bad. The second is that the Congress is in the mess and Rahul and perhaps his mother. We lost Veer right as he was making that point, but I don't think he's vanished because he's gone on vacation. We'll have him right back in a second. That's the problem with uh, with, with connectivity. So while we're waiting for Veer to reconnect, let me get Shahid, uh, who last heard was still somebody in this city who's defending uh, Rahul, who still believes that for all his faults, uh, uh, he's he's the Congress's best bet. Uh, Shahid, are you still feeling like that even after he's gone and gone on vacation at such a time? No, no, it's a, no, Barkha, I'm not here to defend Rahul. I, I would have preferred that he, if he had gone a day after. Um, but uh, I believe that we give, I agree with those who say that we give too much importance to Rahul Gandhi. On the one hand, we say that the Gandhis should lead. And when Gandhi, Gandhi step back, we say, why are they stepping back? Uh, Rahul Gandhi is not the president of the Congress party now. Con Rahul Gandhi is a ordinary working committee member. Yes, of course, he is an important leader, but he has gone to see his grandmother for two days or three days, he had been active for last uh, month or so. He has been quite active on um, various fronts. He plays what is an your important role. What the is problem... your definition of quite active? What is your definition of quite active? He leads no, he... the odd. He leads the odd, odd uh, march somewhere. Yes, and then the... he isn't visible Barkha, on that issue. Barkha, Barkha, he has, Barkha, for example, the... unlike yeah. the farmers. He has not sat anywhere for 30 days Look, in a row. Yes, let me, let me, let me and come the in. Farmers, let the farmers come think you want to be an opposition party. Look, if, if, the, if the opposition leaders come to the farmers movement, it will be said that it is being, it's a political movement. It's being led by the politicians. I mean, everybody has kept away. Um, Mayawati has kept away. Mamta has kept away. Akhlesh has kept away. Uh, most of the people, even Sharad Pawar or even Sharad Yadav have come and Sat with the with the farmers except except Kejriwal. Nobody has gone there because people think that it it will harm the movement and even the peasants don't want it. Like last year when you were having this shine back thing, they didn't want the politicians to come there. So you if have Rahul Gandhi is not going there, it's fine. But so you're not. So you're not. So you think Rahul's done a decent job as an opposition leader? No, he, no, no opposition is doing decent job. The problem with is with the whole opposition. The problem is that there is no opposition in the country. The problem is that the media is, you know, pushing the opposition down. It's not allowing the opposition okay. to come up. Okay. The okay. Opposition okay. is not okay. getting okay. the space. Opposition is getting all the kids. And all the questions are going to the opposition, not to the government. Nobody is okay. asking the government let, let, what let, it let, is doing, what it should be doing. All the there. questions come to the opposition. That is the problem let, today. Let me. The let country me just, is being led in a different direction by the media just, and by the, by, the, by the elite of the country. Let me just hold you there because certainly on this platform for the last one month, we have been focused uh, through ground reports, through discussions, through interviews, very much on the farmers' protests. We've raised a number of tough questions uh, to the government, uh, you know, and we have brought those reports on this platform literally every day since those protests started. But I think uh, I want to just bring back Veer now that he's, uh, he's, he's back with us. Veer, to the point that Shahid is making, that this is actually a capture of media, it's a capture of power, and there's too much focus on Rahul Gandhi. Do you 
you think that there's any uh, any merit to, uh, to that? I mean, you were saying that these are two separate separate debates. You know, Rahul Gandhi and uh, the state of the opposition in general. You were drawing a distinction between those two points. We. Yeah, but there are three different debates. So one is the state of the opposition, which is a different one. The second debate is what Gandhi's have done in the Congress and the state of the Congress. But there's a third debate. I mean, your show today is predicated on the assumption that Rahul Gandhi has gone off on holiday and that's a terrible thing. I mean, I question the third part of this. Why is it such a terrible thing if a politician goes on holiday? Politicians yes. all... know what it is we keep losing veer i think veer is on his phone so every time he gets a phone call i promise you this is no conspiracy uh in the conspiracy mm -hmm. theories we live with somebody will say every time someone's trying to defend rahul gandhi uh actually you lose the connection but before i actually i just before i get veer back again i just want Naveen to briefly respond veer was saying why is it such a bad thing uh if an opposition leader goes on holiday and my answer to him would have been because you're dealing with uh with narendra modi and amit shah who live and breathe politics 24 7 and when that is your incumbent, you cannot do guest appearance politics. But Amit Shah vanishes for weeks together, nobody asks him any question. When Amit is Amit Shah vanished? When is Amit Shah vanished? I mean, the last heard he vanished because he was ill. He was not well. Veer, by the way, you're back and you're on a phone call. But there was no news about it. Call, every time you get a phone call, I think we lose you. Or someone tries to call you, we lose you. But you want to quickly make your point. I got as far as why is it such a bad thing if an opposition leader goes on holiday. No, I, I went further. Why is it such a bad thing if a politician goes on holiday? The President of the United States goes on holiday. The Prime Minister of the UK have all gone on holiday. In India, until recently, there was no problem going on holiday. Mr. Vajpayee went on celebrated holidays. One Christmas, New Year, he took over the Taj Hotel on Kumarakam and went off a holiday. Mrs. Gandhi, when she was running the UPA, went to Lakshadweep for Christmas, New Year. There has never been a tradition in India before Mr. Modi, that the job of every politician is to abandon his family and to stay allegedly working for the nation all the time. I think this is A, an absurd assumption, and B, an assumption we don't question enough. Everybody needs holidays. Politicians are human beings. Politicians all over the world, and in India until recently, including prime ministers, went on holidays. Why is it such a terrible thing if an opposition leader, he's not even the leader of the opposition, goes off on holiday? I mean, I take Shahid's point that he may have gone to be with his grandmother who's critically ill, in which case, of course, we shouldn't be having a criticism of him. Even if that's not true, if he's just gone off for New Year, why is that such a terrible thing? Why do we have this sense in India that all politicians must be there all the time, working like dead dedicated workers for the cause of Bharat Seva. Why can't they be like normal human beings, like non politicians elsewhere in the world? Okay, I just want reactions to that. And Tavleen, I was asking you that question, then I'll come to Sadar and, and, and Shruti. Uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Tavleen. You want me to, say, to respond to that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think, I think Veer is right that politicians should have a right to go on holiday if they're doing their work in the inter, you know, in between the holidays. Now, unfortunately, with Rahul Gandhi, an impression has got created that he's an unserious politician. And where I agree with Shahid this, that it's not so much the media that has created that impression. It is the, uh, the Modi Shah uh, mega machine, propaganda machine that, you know, has created this. I, I, you know, it's hard to hear a BJP spokesman open his mouth without personally targeting Rahul Gandhi. It suits them to have Rahul Gandhi uh, faced up against Modi because then Modi looks as though he's done a great job this year, which he hasn't. The truth is that Modi has made terrible mistakes for the first time in his seven-year career. This has been a disastrous year. He's, I mean, the farmer's thing is just the, you know, not the icing, what is it called? The volcano on a very bad cake, right? Now, what, the, what the, uh, the, they've succeeded in doing is painting Rahul Gandhi as an extremely unserious, dilettante politician. And Rahul has done very little to disabuse that impression. I just, uh, I, I think you're absolutely right, actually. And I want to bring Sadhana and then, and, you know, my point to Veer uh, would be, and but let me just make it to you instead, uh, is that there's a time to go on a holiday. 
and this is a time when the farmers are on 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 the streets uh, two of the three states that are protesting are congress led uh, something states. is happening one election but you know that. what you know what, Shahid, as journal as a journalist, I went on a holiday for two days to Chandigarh and I spent my holiday meeting farmers in the villages of Punjab. I mean, it's either inside you or it isn't inside you, right? If there is, there has to be some some part of you that lives and breathes your chosen profession or your chosen passion. But uh, no, I don't agree with that. Everybody is individual, everybody is different, everybody okay. has different reasons for a holiday. Okay. And I, I, I am afraid of it. politicians who are 24-7 politicians. I am very terrified of them. Those okay. politicians who don't go on a holiday, I am really terrified of them. Next, you Honestly. say you're terrified of journalists who don't yes, go on I, holiday. I've seen, I've seen politicians who are 24-7 politicians are not good politicians. They they are always conspiring. They are okay. not good human beings. Okay, Shahid, 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 let's, let, let's give Sadanand and Shruti who haven't spoken sure. a chance and then we can take it around the panel. Sadanand, go ahead. I mean, sure. Let uh, me quickly disagree uh, with two points. Well, let me quickly disagree with Veer and with Shahid. Um, on the question of you know the political culture and taking vacations being normal, um, I wish it were the case that this were totally normal. I don't think it's actually normal in Indian politics. I don't even think, you know, for example, as I recall, when Bajpayee would go on his vacations, this would be very, you know, choreographed in a political way that he was off there in the mountains to think his deep thoughts to the interests of the nation. It wasn't this kind of, you know, unannounced, furtive getaways multiple times a year before COVID, sometimes multiple points a month. So the character of this uh, taking the time off uh, is very, very different. And it's a problem that has tracked Rahul Gandhi throughout his career. Number two, regardless of whether we think this is a good thing or a bad thing, maybe we think it's the most wonderful thing in the world that he you know, uh, can't seem to spend three weeks in India without jumping onto a plane. But even if you think it's the most wonderful thing in the world, you have to recognize that perception matters in politics. And a perception has been created over the years that Rahul Gandhi is an unserious and inept politician. Now, what does a politician do when you attack him? So if you attack Modi for wearing that disastrous suit with his name all over it, he recognizes that it's a political problem. He changes his behavior by getting rid of that. That's what smart politicians do. Now, if you're an exceptional politician, which Rahul Gandhi is not, you mold public opinion and it doesn't the criticism does not matter because your your political ma ma magnetism or charisma is so great that you can mold political opinion rahul gandhi is not that kind of politician either so if he is not heeding the criticism regardless of whether the criticism are is right or wrong regardless of whether the criticism is mean spirited or or not if he is not able to heed criticism and adapt that to me shows a very, very serious failing as a politician, regardless of the merits of that criticism. Uh, on Shahid's point, I think it's sort of, you know, I, I think it's it's fair to say that there are large sections of the media in India right now that are playing the role of lapdog rather than watchdog. Um, I don't think you can say that for anybody on this, or you can say that for anybody on this on this panel right now. Um, and it's it's the duty of people who you know take their work seriously as commentators or as journalists uh, to be fair-minded. And I yeah. think the idea that we should somehow not criticize Rahul Gandhi for you know behaving preposterously uh, in the political in the political context in which he finds himself, uh, I think that's unfair to journalists. We have every right to be completely critical of Modi for the things he should be criticized for. And also be criticized, be critical of the opposition. Uh, maybe we're critical of the opposition because we wish uh, the opposition were more competent than it is. Yeah. So, so, so let me let me get Shruti in, and then everybody can have another bash at it. And I, I want to come back to Veer. We, we hope you've put your your in, your device on DND because we keep losing you. I think every time you get a phone call. But Shruti, you have spoken Hi. about the annihilation of the opposition. Who's to yeah. blame for that, right? So the point that Rahul Gandhi makes again and again, and has made in other interviews, he did, for example, uh, with uh, you know in a book written by Pradeep Chibber and Harsha, mm -hmm. uh, he said this is a capture. This is a capture. This isn't a normal. Mm -hmm democratic process at work. Is he helping himself? Look at the timing of his vacations. And that is my argument. Right? Once again, once again, let, me just complete, let me just complete my question. Farmers protest, he's away. Whether to meet grandmother, whether to go away for New Year's Eve, we don't know because he didn't tell us. Bihar elections, he went to his, his sister's house in the, in, in, in the mountains in the middle of the Bihar elections. I mean, who does this? It, it's like it's like telling me as a journalist that I would choose to go on vacation in the middle of the COVID pandemic. 
Like, would I go away in the middle of the biggest story that there is that the news world produced? It's a similar thing. Go ahead, Shruti. Uh, well, you clearly didn't, and you put your colleagues to shame. But I, uh, I wanted to say something else, that actually this focus on personality is a red herring, whether it is Rahul Gandhi or, or the like. We talk a lot about Modi and Shah and charismatic uh, hold over, the Indian, uh, over Indian democracy, but we shouldn't forget that what Modi represents is an idea and an ideology. So what is at the crisis, at the root of the crisis in Indian opposition is the failure of producing a new idea. And I think that is why it can be no one's case. It cannot be disputed that the Congress is in, in a paralytic state. Now, it is up to you whether you want to choose on his holiday making, because that makes good, good soap opera, which people are now you know, habituated into reading. Oh, you know, he's gone in, he's gone out, you know, photographing him in, 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 in ways which is not in, in, incredibly flattering for him. That's a whole other thing. So I think the question is about leadership. And, and image politics. And I think both those things are a red herring because as Biden's election has shown, as a rising power of even Keir Starmer, who is not really known to be a big personality in the, in the, in the Labour Party in, in, in the UK, you don't actually need a big, big, big personality uh, to, counter, uh, to counter the heavyweight charisma of say someone like Modi or say someone like Trump. So I think the issue is the crisis in India's opposition is actually an idea. The warfare, the ideological warfare of Hindu majoritarianism is complete. And to, to, to actually find a new language around it, to oppose it, is, is, is the challenge. So you see a lot of restiveness in Indian society. You see over de demonstrations you now periodically every winter coming onto, onto Delhi. So new social coalitions are in place. But no one, absolutely no one in the opposition is able to to pin it. My view, would be, my view would be, can I just, my view would be that the Congress should actually split. It should actually, you know, become even a smaller party, people who are committed to a few things, and it wastes too much time on stitching up its internal factions. For instance, it should have let go of Sachin Pilot, who I think was a very, it was a, it was a spoiled political leader who is holding well the party to, party to hostage. So the leadership itself is involved in actually the managing of intrigue and courtly politics that Tavleen Singh writes so beautifully about. So I think that, but, but these are all, the, the, these are the real distractions. The distractions are not the holidays because I would hate to compare Rahul Gandhi to, to Mahatma Gandhi, but as a historian of politics, you would see that Mahatma Gandhi absolutely interrupted his politics very repeatedly, much to the criticism of, 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 his, of his supporters. So I think there is a lot to be said here. If we can, uh, if we can actually talk not about Rahul Gandhi's vacations, but actually to talk about what, what is a crisis in India's political landscape, which is a real idea which can actually oppose the warfare of, uh, of Hindu nationalism. Can, can I just ask you to briefly, because it's interesting and it's a new argument. You're actually saying even if Rahul Gandhi were a 24-7 politician, it would actually make no difference to the fortunes of the Congress party. It would no to the country. Let me just see, see if I've got you right. You're dealing with a country that has pivoted right. You know, I, I was saying to Vinay Sitapati the other day, the author of a new book on the BJP, that that government moved Vajpayee to the center and Modi moved India to the right. Is that what you're saying has actually happened? Yes, exactly. Okay, so, you know, it has 38% of the electorate, but the footprint for it feels much larger. So if whereas, you know, all mass democracies, whether it's America or Britain, have had very divisive political polarized landscapes, where it feels polarized, it feels divided. Here, the capture feels complete. So actually, you know, if you were the Congress, if you were really interested in re reigniting the Congress, you would use this as an opportunity, as a luxury to go to ground zero and start afresh, get rid of the people who don't who don't want to, to, to be a part of it. Instead, the, the politics of intrigue and the politics of newspaper writing in India and the political discourse has been is so captivated in, in personality, partly because that's how Modi and, and the BJP have led it, uh, led that yeah. campaign in that manner. So yes, I, I would say that whether he's in or out is kind of besides the point. Uh, and you could again look at the Democrats again where you know people actually captured like the democrats for justice actually captured the dnc uh, to, to have a whole parallel set of organizations and put a whole other candidates you can, 
those are the real serious questions the questions are let not let me, let me get reactions let me get reactions because yours is an interesting point yours is an interesting point but to me it sounds and i want tavleen we uh, also to come in and then sadanand and shahid to me it sounds uh, tavleen like shruti is basically uh, you know saying that if the match is unequal you shouldn't even bother to try playing or maybe she's saying you need to play by different rules because these Absolutely. rules these rules you, are working if rahul gandhi were even here it would be no different he doesn't have a language the congress party doesn't have a language that can right now counter uh, narendra modi and therefore that is the crisis and that's where the opposition is failing not on whether rahul gandhi takes 5 days off okay i want to just put to you a proposition if indira gandhi had been in the opposition do you think that at this particular time she would not have been at the barricades I with agree. those farmers if she had to walk through mud she would have done it if she needed to go on an elephant she would have done it now unfortunately the truth is that the personality of political leaders does matter and that you know if you are a serious politician then when there are so many crises going on you do not take off to see granny okay you know you 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 you're there to actually be there for your party to encourage your lower level workers to go out and try and garner support and you know to try and put out the message that modi has made many mistakes and that this could be the one mistake too many you know the last the the, the last straw on the camel's back or whatever so you know i mean i really don't think at the moment that even if the congress party were to you know be standing by its ideology which it should do but it's not good enough you really do need a leader sharad pawar has been able to take on uh, the congress i mean the bjp in maharashtra because he's a real politician because he's known what it means to be in connection with the people unfortunately rahul the people that he connects most with are in the drawing rooms of delhi it's not, not good I'm enough not, anymore i'm not even sure he connects to what i say yeah. come to yeah. they yeah. love okay. it Okay, once again, because because Veer's connection has been so unstable, I just want to make the most of having him uh, with us and ask him to 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 respond to this. Uh, Veer, you just missed the beginning, I think, of what Shruti said, but she pretty much said that uh, that that what we should be talking about is that opposition doesn't have an idea and there's too much focus on individuals. But I still want to push you uh, on on your point. What's wrong with a holiday? And there've been a series of reactions to it, right? And 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 I gave an example from from journalism. You know, would a would a great journalist or would a good journalist even take off in the middle? No. Okay, we're having a real problem with Veer today. I don't know what it is. It's like okay, we'll try and get him back. So, Darren, do you want to come in on what 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 Shruti said? I mean, at this point, Veer is taking more vacations than Rahul Gandhi. <laughs> 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 yeah, seriously, man. Okay, but go ahead. Yeah. No, what was your question again? Uh, you know, Shruti's point, uh, and juxtaposed with with Tavlees, that if Indra was there, she would have ridden an elephant through those crowds. If she had to, she would have hitched her sari, waded through those crowds, sat on dharna with the farmers, not cared whether people said, "Oh, the farmers' movement is getting politicized." This would not have been the time when she would have decided to do a world tour or meet her niece or meet her aunt or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 Shruti's point that this is a red herring. Shruti's point is this is a complete red herring. It wouldn't matter if Rahul Gandhi were here. for new for I, for new I, really look i i tend to agree with i mean I, i agree with some of what both of them are saying but i agree with kareen um that we can't wish away the role of of personality in politics um and i would argue that uh, personality has been central to the rise of modi personality has been central to the rise of any dominant politician in india including in the right uh it it matters personality matters your ability to communicate matters your relationship with the media matters all of these things are political skills we've seen someone like arvind kejriwal who has really come from nowhere and established a kind of foothold in indian politics largely because he knows how to be a good politician in whatever you know in in, in he knows what it takes to to succeed in that arena um and mm -hmm. then you could name many many other play, uh, people too um the problem with rahul gandhi is that he comes across as entitled and inept it may not have mattered so much say 30 or 40 years ago when the dominance of the congress was complete over indian politics and the dominance of his family was complete over the congress now what he has he's unfortunately for him he's inherited the shell of a party 
and he's inherited uh, and he has come of age in a country where uh, many many people actually look at this guy and say that well i'm not is i'm not sure that he's better than me and that yeah. is actually fatal for him because you have so much of this middle class energy in india and so many people who reject the congress precisely because of his personality right so it's not as though his personality is just neutral and it doesn't matter at all he actually hurts the that he hurts the congress party he hurts the opposition because of his of the personality that and, he plays and, and therefore that is a fatal and therefore you have to right? address and it's not and difficult to address right the bar is so low what he has to do is show seriousness one of the ways he can show seriousness is to acknowledge that there is a narrative out there it may be an unfair narrative but the narrative exists acknowledge that narrative and tailor his behavior accordingly will that by itself suddenly make him a great politician maybe not but at least it shows progress at least it would show that he shows a show a level of seriousness on the question of ideology you know i'm personally not entirely sure what the congress's ideology is i mean it's been a big tent party it used to be a big tent party the big idea was let's get rid of the let's get rid of the british that made sense to all kinds of people with different ideas and then for since the late 1960s this has been the the vehicle of the gandhi family um in yeah. the gandhi in her heyday you could argue you know stood for socialism and economics and uh, kind of uh, left wing uh, inspired secularism in on on the cultural side but that even that has not been true of the congress at least in the last 20 or 25 at least since since since, since her you know uh, passing so you could say that yes the congress stands for not being the bjp but i'm not sure if beyond that the party really has much of an ideology yeah so shruti i'll let you come yeah. in and then shahid yeah shruti yeah. i know, I know you want to start shahid right yeah. after that yeah go ahead yeah can i just say a couple of things it's all very well to compare indira gandhi to to rahul gandhi uh, in in this in this manner but i think there's a deep structural problem with indian politics that historically there's always been one major dominant national party and there've been regional kind of opposition parties which is why people like pawar can can survive and that's happened down the road the problem today in india is that hindu nationalism is a very strong ideology and it, for, for the first time i you know one could tentatively agree with someone like swapan das gupta who says you know there are two ideas of india and actually that is what is operation in india it is not as what sadanand dhume says that it is not the bjp there is a basic compact that was settled a political settlement took place in 1947 in india that is upended whether we like it or not whether we want to call it by, for its real name or not and that is what now needs an opposition now if whether you want to call it secular whether you want to call it socialist i'll agree with sadanand to this extent that that language now needs to be updated it cannot no longer be uh, people cannot be exhorted to speak in the nehru nehruvian language you know 70 years after the man is gone or 60 years after the man is gone so i think i do think the ta task is ideological anyone who thinks that modi is just a, a leader and is just a personality do not know what they are talking about because it's a 100 year history of hindu nationalism which has come to come to fully take ideological hold of india so if you think that modi is just pure charisma you are absolutely missing the main story because frankly tomorrow even if modi goes there will be many others who will be able to fulfill that will fulfill that role. so so i know shahid is wanting to come in sadanand uh, sadanand just give me a second and shahid has been waiting for a while but my counter question building on that would have been in this 100 year history 60 years of it were taken by the congress party so if there's been a 100 year hindu nationalist <laughs> project what do what the bjp did it went to ground zero it remade itself and it is able and this is an absolute opportunity and luxury for the congress i think okay, shahid, the other thing. right barkha barkha but the congress has been on a decline for for decades and i i resigned from congress in 99 when i did not agree with sonia gandhi who didn't want to form a coalition government the congress decided that we should not go into a coalition and i said future is of the coalition and i resigned from the congress in 99 when she took over and and the problem with congress has been that they came back to power with not many seats they did not get much vote they were able to form a coalition ultimately but they did not 
rebuild the party. I, I, I hold Sonia Gandhi responsible. What Rahul Gandhi has got is a shell. I agree, shell of a party. And secondly, it's not accidental that it's in uh, uh, there's a Trump in America or there's a Johnson in emerging in in in, in, in UK and other right wing leaders are emerging all over the world. It's not accidental that Modi is also emerging here, has emerged here. And the battle is basically ideological battle. The left is on the decline globally and it's on the decline in India. Left used to be the pivot around which a coalition used to build against, against whether it's against Congress or the other way. But that is not the case today. And it, it, there's a vacuum in the opposition. It's not just Rahul Gandhi. The vacuum is they are everywhere in the south, in the north. In Alalu is not there. Amulayam is not there. A Kiranandi is not there. Even Sharad Pawar is not that kind of leader who could lead the, his party the way he used to. And Mamta is also uh, facing a flag. So today you do not have an all India national political opposition leader who has got any uh, acceptance anywhere. So it's not just about Rahul Gandhi. And, and there's no narrative. The opposition is unable to build the narrative because Hindutva has taken hold so strongly. It's not true. Even Look the, at the, the uh, so-called secular parties are playing soft Hindutva. They are afraid of putting their Muslim leaders forward. They are they are being asked to keep away their spokesperson, Muslim spokesperson, others are being asked not to go go to, to, to the media. That okay. is happening okay. with, okay. with okay. most okay. of the secular parties, okay. including okay. Samajwadi party. Right. I know it for a fact from people who are working there. Shahid. Okay, Sadarad, you, uh, Sadarad, you were wanting to respond and I am really hoping Veer's line remains stable. Veer, on a, on a lighter note, Sadaran said you are taking more vacations than Rahul Gandhi at this moment in these 60 minutes. You keep vanishing all us. Uh, no, we are joking. Uh, we'll come to you in just a moment. We hope you'll still be there when we come to you. Sadaran, go ahead. Yeah. So I just want to, you know, respond to Dr. Kapala briefly. I don't think anybody is making the argument that the BJP doesn't have an ideology. Obviously, the BJP has an ideology. That ideology is Hindu nationalism, and that ideology is ascendant in India and has been ascendant for a while. The question I'm raising is, does Congress really have an ideology of its own that is beyond not being the BJP? What is the Congress's ideology on economics? I don't know. I write about the economy a lot. Are they for economic reforms? Are they against economic reforms? Did they think 1991 was a good idea or did they think that it went too far too fast? These are very fundamental questions. What is Congress's approach towards secularism? Does it seek as its ideal state, right? If the BJP wants a Hindu Rashtra, what is the ideal state that Congress seeks? Does Congress seek to roll back time and go back to the 1960s? I'm not making a value judgment. I'm just saying, what do they want? Or do they want some kind of accommodation where uh, Hindu religiosity in the public sphere, temple visits, that sort of thing is, you know, more uh, is, is, is more part of their po political vocabulary? Um, my, my, my point is that not that the BJP doesn't have an ideology. The point is that it's not clear to me that the Congress has an ideology. And if it does have an ideology, it's doing an extremely bad job of communicating it. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to now try my luck uh, at this point uh, with Veer, uh, who, who's, who we've been having sort of uh, weighed in and out of the program because of unstable connectivity. Veer, you missed a lot of the conversation and you've got strands of it. Just just jump back in. I think the debate currently is, is this a, is focusing on the individual and his or her vacations a red herring, as Dr. Shruti Kapila argues it is, who, who thinks that, that the real problem is that India has altered, that there's a big long-standing historical Hindu nationalist project that has come to bear fruit, uh, or is it that there is an ineptitude to Rahul Gandhi that is further amplified in these vacations? And my quarrel with you over vacations is nobody grudges a person a hard-earned vacation. But when the vacation doesn't seem hard-earned, when the vacation seems mistimed, when the vacation seems ill-timed, when the vacation has no politics or even political image making to it, which by the way, all the examples that you drew, I think Sadarand was correct in saying that even when the Americans, you know, sort of take a break and go to Camp David or whatever, when, you know, when the, when, when the royal family goes on vacation, it's it's all about image building. There's always image in the backdrop constantly. That's the age we live in. We live in the age of the image. So it isn't just a collision of ideas. So go ahead. And let me just unmute you while you're having well, Okay. Okay, I probably have about six seconds or so before. I probably have six seconds <laughs> before I disconnect. But quickly, I mean, Sadanand is entitled to his position, but it seems to me to be a mistake to 
compare what a prime minister does to what an individual opposition politician does. As for the claim that it's fine to go on holiday, yeah, just choreograph it. Actually, that's not true. When British prime ministers go on holiday, no media is allowed. It's not choreographed. When Vajpayee went to uh, Kerala, no media was allowed. He went regularly to Manali. It was not choreographed. So if you're going to talk historical context, he's wrong. But that's not the important. <laughs> okay, this is this is just how it is. It's it's one of those days for me. But I think he got his point in, and I think we can take uh, maybe last comments on the point that he's trying to make. Uh, and I think the the framework of the debate is pretty clear. I don't think it's literally Shruti about those four days off. I think the point is the timing and the competition. So let's just take a last a last uh, comments on that, and I'll start with you, Shruti. Well, I think, I mean, I think it's interesting that uh, Shahid Siddiqui said that the left or the liberals are on the retreat. But I think the, the, the defeat of Trump is a very sobering, uh, uh, sobering uh, result for, for, for the world. And I think one can learn, actually, the Congress could learn from what has happened with the Democrats, where there was actually huge factionalism between the Sanders lot and, and, and the anti-Sanders lot. And they managed it. The problem with the Congress is that they're fighting over very little. And, and, and the internal factional politics are, are, are dr driving it to, 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 to from, from the real work of actually ideologically remaking itself. So my view is historically the Congress has survived and done better when it has split. It should now have the courage and define itself in very clear terms what it is, who it is, and let go of people who are actually causing this politics. What should happen, what should happen to the Gandhis in this split? In your the, the person who does it will be the eventual, will be the de facto leader. So it's not about Priyanka Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi or Sonia Gandhi. I mean, there's a real myth that Sonia Gandhi has been a unifier, but actually, you know, the, the party has dwindled under her watch. So the question is, whoever is willing to say, and you know, why should you know people like Sachin Pilot be put up with? I mean, I think it's 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 gross misbehavior to hold a government to hostage just because of your own personal political ambition. But and, it and, it, and, it, and it isn't uh, wrong to hold the fortunes of a political party to hostage because no, absolutely. Of so, but, absolutely, this is my point. It's it's not about the family itself. The party could do what the DNC has done. Where, as I said, when the Clinton machinery was so powerful and the people were so upset with it, they set up an alternative machinery, which is why people like AOC and you know Mamdani, the the, the huge fresh blood that the DNC has got, that the Democrats got. And, but, and they were able to then look up to someone like Biden, who was just a kind of compromise candidate, not high on charisma, not high on personality. Okay. It is very possible. But I think th the question is both two ways. It is a symbiotic relationship. Congress leader, Congress, P Congress politicians are also inherently lazy because they dump that work of leadership onto the family. Okay, I've got five minutes left on the show. Sadanand, you can take that. Yeah, so one for one quick factual correction. I was not comparing Rahul Gandhi's vacations to vacations by Western leaders. I think in the West, it's a much more much more sort of established in politics that you know leaders take some time off. I was saying that he comes across as out of step with Indian political culture, and I think even where you know sometimes maybe the press wouldn't be allowed with Vajpayee, but the whole thing was still choreographed in the press, right? In the sense that well, he's out and he's he there's, there's something somehow. Uh, noble and wise about him being in the hills and so on. So, right, it was still kind of managed, even if you didn't have journalists actually sitting with him. I agree that in the West, the sort of the political culture is different. Um, on the question of uh, Biden and how you get this together, um, I think that's a really good point. You know, there was you could argue that uh, Trump lost not because Biden was the most riveting candidate in the world, but because. Biden was able to gather all the strands of discontent against Trump together from the far left to the centrist to the Republican never Trumpers. All of these people were brought together. But that requires skillful politics. Now, I agree with Tavleen's latest column that, you know, Modi looks his weakest ever. Uh, he's had a catastrophic year. We have a history in Indian politics of in, of, of governments or, or prime ministers in their seventh year suddenly facing a lot of problems. Manmohan Singh had that problem. Indira Gandhi had that problem in 1973. So you would imagine that someone who is kind of, you know, alert to these things would at this point be working over time to correct his own image and to pull together all the strands of opposition to this government. Um, unfortunately, we see no evidence that Rahul Gandhi is that person. 
Okay. Uh, Tablin, you wanted to come in. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I want to make two points. One is the most important point that you're missing is that the, the Congress is not a political party anymore. I mean, it's all very well to compare it with the Democratic Party, but that is, it's a false comparison. If the Congress was the political party that it once was, then it wouldn't matter who the leader was. The other thing that I would like to say is, please don't forget how much pushback we're seeing against Modi. And it's Modi in Bihar, the, you know, the corruptest political party in India, nearly won again with a kid who's never had an administrative job. So there is pushback. And in the BJP itself, I believe that without Modi, the BJP becomes the party that it was under Advani and Atalji. I don't think that we can deny that it is Modi's personal um, image that he, he's made, remade the party in his image. But if he wasn't there, you would have the party, the BJP would go back to being a slightly Hindu party that it was. I mean, I can't see Gadkari or Rajnath Singh or any of those leading love jihads and all this sort of thing. So, you know, those are the two points that I'd like to make. So, Shahid, I think that's a very important point because, the, you know, you are dealing with the cult of personality. And I want to emphasize the word cult because even when, let's say, Ayodhya and the Ram Mandir Foundation Stone Ceremony happened and I actually was there, I remember being struck by this image where there was more Modi than there was Ram. It was just a sea of Modi and that was it. It was a sea of Modi. You are dealing with, with the politics of cult, not just the cult of Modi. So when you're dealing with the politics of cult, how do you say that how Rahul Gandhi comes across as a personality is irrelevant? I, but, I disagree. There's but, ideology, but, uh, but more than ideology, there's personality. And I really believe if Modi were to readapt tomorrow to some other version of Hindutva, for example, his outreach with the Aligarh Muslim University. Let's just talk about that. He suddenly just completely deviated from what his heart base had been saying and called this entire AMU uh, sort of bastion, of, you know, a group of nationalists. And, and his base didn't know what to do. Modi often does this. He loves disrupting, shaking up the conventional script. So, How is but, personality? But the, but the point is that at the moment, there is no one who can take on Narendra Modi, either ideologically or as a person in the whole opposition. That, that is the unfortunate and that is the biggest strength of Narendra Modi at the moment. His strength is not what he's doing. His strength is what opposition is not able to do. And therefore, it's whether you have Rahul Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi goes away, you don't. You Congress is a party of mediocre today. It's a party of psychophants for a long time. And Sonia it's Gandhi not a political it. Party. It started with Mrs. Gandhi, Gandhi, but Sonia Gandhi only got the total psychophants who could not talk to her, who could not reach her. It was only through Ahmad Bhai okay. and now Ahmad Bhai is also not there. So yes. Congress party has, is finished as a party. So whether Rahul yes. Gandhi leads it or not, the problem is that opposition is not able to rebuild itself. And I don't see uh, any light at the end of the tunnel okay. unless a new kind of narrative, a new kind of leadership is thrown up by the situation. So you, 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 you're and, all and very democracy, astute. They do, do come up. You never know from where they come. You're all, very, they you're, come. All very, you're all very astute politicians. So as a set of last comments, in 20 seconds each, I want you all to tell me where you think the Congress party will be by the time we are at the next general election. Shruti, I'll start with you. Please keep your answer short because I'm already exceeded time. So let me just unmute you and go ahead. Yeah. If it doesn't, if it doesn't split, if it doesn't actually cohere ideologically, it will be a party of a few personality-led uh, leaders, whether it's Shashi Tharoor, whether it is members of the the, the family. Uh, but if it actually goes, it actually says, you know, we, we will we will fail big. And will take huge political risks because I disagree with Tavleen saying that it is not a party because it still has the largest political infrastructure after the BJP across the country. So it is it is possible to revive that in infrastructure, but for that it will actually have to shed, split, and become clear of what it is. Okay, Shahid, where will it be? Yes, it, if Congress Party has to re-emerge, then it should come up with a clear ideology which it does not have at the moment. And ideology which is totally opposed to the ideology of BJP and Narendra Modi. And it's not Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi wouldn't have been able to win without the base support of the RSS, okay. which has been working for 100 years. And now it has come to fruit itself. Now, they, they were not successful for, for 50, 60 years. But today, they are. They are able to build up 
ഇറ്റ് <laughs> it is possible that if the economy continues to be in the doldrums if we continue to see the you know pandemic not properly controlled if we continue if if the bjp has another catastrophic year then it would be possible perhaps for even a shambolic party we've seen this in the past right we've had various shambolic parties manage to kind of cobble something together simply because the incumbent government has been really unpopular uh, so that's okay. a sort of short term prognosis but in the long term the congress does need to figure out what it is and it needs to figure out its leadership if it needs to have a future tavli last word to you i think the congress party needs to draw in younger leaders like say chandrashekhar azad uh, real dalit leaders real leaders from the muslim community real leaders from the sikh community and there are many there are very capable young indian politicians yeah. and if the congress party can draw them in then it doesn't matter whether who it's led by but it must go back to being that party that represents the opposite of hindutva right okay we leave it there a very interesting conversation uh, you know a conversation of ideas a conversations where there wasn't a always agreement but i think uh, broadly the one agreement was that if modi uh, is facing some of his toughest challenges uh, this uh, is a moment when a more effective opposition would have converted those challenges into into something more significant than it has managed my own sense from reporting on the ground is that modi despite everything despite all the pushback seems teflon and all the pushback to him seems to be coming from people uh, it doesn't seem to be structural political opposition it seems to be people people led push back uh, and and no one is actually converting the people's energy uh, into anything at all leaving it there and sorry we we missed having you on the show we'll bring you back in the next conversation with hopefully a better line uh, thank you shahid sadanand tavneen and uh, shruti and thank, thank you for you our audience at the same time thank you for watching thank you thank you bye guys thank you